Welcome everybody to the Cincinnati Bengals Weekly Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. The Cincinnati Bengals Weekly Show right now is brought to you by Replenishing Care, the future of sports medicine. Make sure you check them out by going to thegruelingtruth.net and click the banner at the top of the page. I'm your co-host for the Cincinnati Bengals Show, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I want to welcome in our other co-host. Started in Super Bowl 23 is number 58 for the Cincinnati Bengals. Help me welcome to the show, Joe Kelly. How you doing, Joe? Hey, you doing great, Mike. What's up, buddy? Man, it's uh, football season. Football season again, man. You start getting that itch, you know, and, uh, you know, getting, getting excited, man. Getting excited for the upcoming year. Yeah, and believe it or not, this is the fourth year we've done this now. Wow. Wow. Time time goes, man. Time, time flies, man. I guess time flies when you're having fun, Mike. Well, you know, I, four I, years ago we had fun with 2015, but 16 and 17 weren't <laughs> that much fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully this you will know, be more like 15. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I, like, we, we were we were excited the last couple of years, and uh, things didn't work out. We were hoping that, uh, you know, I, I think, like I said, our, like, last year our, our biggest thing were, was the, our offensive line, and uh, they, it didn't pan out, you know, and, and that was a, a huge difference in our last two seasons. Uh, had we had, you know, better production in our offensive line, that would have helped you know, it would have helped everybody. It would have helped Andy. It would have helped our running backs. Uh, you know, and it would put, a, put us in a, you know, a lot better situation. But, you know, we can't cry about spilt milk. Mike, you know, it's a, it's a new year. Uh, training camp is starting, and uh, uh, I'm hearing some, some good things down there. Yeah, and as you started, we'll talk about the offensive line first. And everything I've heard about the offensive line is – the change of getting Paul Alexander the hell out of here has helped big time. <laughs> and, I mean, this old line from the reports I've heard is an offensive line that all of a sudden looks very aggressive. And as yes. you said, yeah. as goes the offensive of and defensive line on a football team, that tells yeah. you what's going to happen. And let's face it, last year this team was one of the worst rushing teams in football. And the running backs, Joe Mixon and Gio Bernard and even Jeremy Hill, would make you think that wouldn't be the case. So what have you yeah. been hearing about the offensive line? Oh, I, I, it's, it's a totally different approach. I mean, you're, you're talking about a totally totally uh, different situation, man. It's like getting divorced and getting remarried and, and being in bliss. You know, <laughs> we, 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 we've been so passive uh, the, the last last uh, couple of years. Um, uh, the last couple of years, as long as Paul Alexander uh, has been there, and the, the, the technique that Paul teaches is a, it's a passive technique. It's a, it's a, it's a catch and uh, a reach technique. And uh, this guy uh, uh, who's been coaching the Cowboys offensive line for the last several years, uh, you, you look at you look at the guys that that um, uh, he drafted, and uh, you look how how he has molded those guys. Uh, and right now, you can. You can really say that uh, they're uh, one of the best, if not the best, core of offensive linemen in the league. And um, uh, he's down there, and he, he's down there, and he's he's in their face. Uh, I think Paul Alexander was a more a passive guy, and you know, rub rub your shoulder, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna be okay, and uh, you know, you'll you'll do better tomorrow. Uh, Mike, this guy's in their face. You know, and he's growling and he's yelling. You know, and he's demanding. You know, he's demanding excellence. He's he's demanding their on their on their footwork. You know, on on their aggressiveness, on on the way they attack. And you know, he's in their face, man. And uh, uh, from what I hear, man, he's uh, it's 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 making a difference. You know, those yeah. guys. And we have the size. We have the size. Our guys. Uh, when you look at uh, what uh, you look at Dallas Cowboys, their their offensive line and what their average weight, you know, and and and, and height is, we're we're right there. Uh, and like I said, now you know this game is, uh, you know, you got to be a little nasty in the, in the trenches, and uh, you know, I, I think he's bringing some of that to the table. Yeah, and if you look at it, Frank Pollock was the offensive line coach at Dallas, and the big thing is we replaced Paul Alexander with Frank Pollock, which brings a new attitude. And the other thing about Frank Pollock. If you're a player, you know yourself, Joe, if all of a sudden you get a linebacker's coach in and this guy is coming from a team that's had dominant linebacker play, he has your respect from the get-go. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, they, and these guys know, and, and he's, he's teaching. These guys are, he's, I think, I don't know, three out, three out of the five guys are all pro guys. 
uh, and they know uh, the, the, the kind of guys that he's coached and what he has done to them and, and the, the level uh, that he has elevated all of those offensive linemen uh, down in Dallas and uh, other linemen that he, he's coached. So, you know, when he, walk, when he walked in the door, there was, you know, there was that level of respect. And, you know, here, you know, this guy is a, he's a consummate professional. Uh, you know, he's, uh, this, this guy has, has a proven track record. So you know when you when you when you uh, um, uh, walk into the room and you know and if I'm walking in, into a, 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 a linebacker's room and and you know th- this coach has uh, uh, coached uh, uh, Lawrence Taylor and 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 and, and Carl Banks and you know uh, uh, Gary Reeses and, and <laughs> you know those, yeah, those Harry guys Carson. you know yeah. this guy this guy has has some respect you know. Other than I've been in situations where when I played for the Packers, uh, my linebacker coach was the quarterback coach at Brigham Young. You know, so it's kind of like it's, it's, it's a different, you know, it's a different vibe when this guy walks in the room. So, you know, uh, Pollock, he has that, that respect. He has respect throughout the league. And uh, these guys know that they're going to have to uh, turn up uh, their intensity uh, if they want to play for this guy. All right, and, and the other thing was this. I think the two most important positions on an offensive line outside of the coach are the center and your and, and your tackles. And Cedric yes. Boy, he yeah. is not going to be the starting tackle, I don't believe. Cordy Glenn will. Cordy Glenn is a solid player. If he stays healthy, I think he's going to be really successful. Yeah. And then you got Billy yeah. Price. The center came from Ohio State, which, let's face yeah. it, a turtle would be an upgrade over Russell Bodine. <laughs> so when, when you look at it, it, to be a great coach, you've got to have players, too. And I think that they have yeah. the players in here now where this can be really successful. And when you look at the backfield, Joe Mixon is leaner, meaner, a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Gio Bernard's going to be Gio Bernard. He's always going to give you everything yeah. he's got. And when you look at that, I, I think right there means the run game will be significantly better this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you look at those guys, and if, if a way he is starting for us, then, then, then Mike, we're in trouble. You know, I don't, I don't see a way he's uh, starting. Uh, I, I'm looking at, you said, like Gordy, uh, just his size. If you look at, I've seen uh, 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 Geno Atkins walking uh, next to him side by side, you know, and, and it was like a, a dad taking uh, their their kid to Pop Warner practice. That's how how big, you know, he looked compared to Geno Atkins. Uh, but, you know, this guy has a proven track record. This guy has, has some success in the league. Uh, the thing is, he just has to stay healthy, you know, and uh, him just being healthy and, and being uh, uh, bringing to the table what uh, just an average, just as, just as average of, of what he can do is going to be an upgrade from, from what we've had the last couple of years. And then, yeah, like I said, you bring in uh, the kid Price from Ohio State, and uh, it's, a, it's an automatic upgrade. Uh, this, this uh, you know, you're coming from uh, Ohio State, you know, great university, uh, and this this kid uh, is is a bon- has been a bona fide starter uh, in the Big Ten. Started, I want to say three years, um, but he's uh, he's coming. He's, he has a he's, he has a, a, a great football uh, IQ. And uh, from what I hear in, in OTAs, he was picking up the, 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 the schemes. The thing about the center, Mike, you understand? They're the quarterback. They're the quarterback. Yeah, so, they got to make know, the gonna have to, Yeah, you're gonna have to make the, the adjustments. You know, you and the quarterback are going to have to be on the same page. You're going to have to, uh, when, when that defensive line is moving and, you know, uh, 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 and they're stunning, uh, you're going to have to make those calls. And, and you know, you're, you're going to have to be voiceful. You know, you can't be passive, you know, playing center. Uh, well, we, we've seen that with, with that guy as Mike the last uh, four or five years. Uh, but I think this kid, uh, this from, from what I've seen uh, uh, mentally, I, I think he's there. He's uh, – uh, his physical stature, uh, to me, uh, he's, he's he's a guy that can be stout in there, and and, and we're going to need need the, that center to be stout and 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 uh, uh, so that pocket when when Andy is dropping back and taking a three step drop or five step drop, that pocket doesn't automatically collapse like it's been the last two three years. Yeah, and let's face it, the Bengals haven't had a good center since Rich Bram, and that was about a decade ago. <laughs> When we look at the yeah. tight end position, um, I think you've got to love what Tyler Croft did last year. And yeah, now yeah. we've also got Tyler Eifert. If Eifert can yeah. stay healthy with Croft, uh, this team could have a really devastating offense, especially 
when you look at the wide receiver position, what we'll do in a second. But do you want to talk a little bit about Croft and Eifert? Well, you, you look at you look at Croft, and, and uh, I wasn't really high on Croft two years ago, but the things that he did uh, with uh, Eifert uh, uh, being out, uh, this this guy uh, became a starter uh, in the NFL, and, he, and this guy has uh, showed that uh, he can be a productive uh, tight end in the NFL. You know, this this guy is a uh, you know eight to me he's kind of eight back kind of guy. You know, but he, but he's, he's physical enough to, to block and be stout in there when we need him to. And uh, he's he's a guy that can he can beat that you know outside linebacker one on one and and, and uh, when going out for a, a pass. Um, so the thing is, now we know that we have a, a, a bona fide backup uh, with Eifert. The guy's still young, Mike. Uh, I know you know it's, 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 the guy is, is, is not healthy. Uh, he hasn't been healthy, and you know that's you know you can contribute that to just bad luck. You know it's you know me playing 11 years in the NFL. I don't know if I ever you know after my rookie I ever played healthy. Um, I went into the season healthy, but after that I don't I can't tell you if I ever played a game that I was just totally healthy where there wasn't anything wrong. You know so he just had bigger injuries than most guys. Uh, but if if uh, they're taking him uh, taking him slow. Uh, this preseason, uh, and if we can have this guy, Mike, for you know, fourteen, fifteen games, I'm telling you, this this guy, he brings an, an element uh, to your offense uh, that uh, you you can look at uh, the Kansas City Chiefs uh, tight end, uh, you know, Jimmy Graham up in Seattle, uh, those those type of guys that are uh, tight ends, but they they have wide receiver hands. So if if, if Iceberg can stay healthy, Mike. That this guy just brings a, a totally different element uh, to our offense, uh, and and uh, uh, I think it, we would it would be tremendous uh, with his presence. Yeah, and then we talk about the wide receiver position, which was a position that I really was worried about going into this year. But right now, it seems yeah. Tyler Boyd has really improved. Um, maybe it's just because mm-hmm. he's going against Drake Kirkpatrick, but um, Tyler Boyd's <laughs> really improved. Um, mm-hmm. And I think Boyd is huge. John Ross looks good. And if you've yeah. got Tyler Boyd in the slot, you got John Ross there, it's going to be really hard to double-team A.J. Green. It's going to make everything much easier on A.J. Green. And when you look at all these weapons included with Joe Mixon, Tyler Eifert, if he's healthy, Gio Bernard, this offense has a chance to be one of the best in the NFL. Oh, you know, we were, we were talking about that last year, you know, Mike, but uh, unfortunately our offense – the line didn't didn't hold up, and, and John Ross, it, you know, it was his inability from me, me talking to Eric Ball and some of the coaches all season, um, his inability to, to really pick up the offense. You know, that was that played a bigger role than anything else. You know, of course, there were some issues with his health, uh, shoulders, knees, da 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 da. But it was really uh, him uh, being able to uh, be comfortable in that offense and and know uh, to uh, to run the right routes. Uh, when uh, when the defense gives you a certain coverage, you know you have to check off. So you know with this in this day and age, even when I play, you know there's always adjustments, uh, and you, they may have a certain out that's called for them. But if the defense gives you a a certain look, you can't run. You can't run a certain out if the defense the defense is, uh, takes takes it, takes it away. So uh, you know from what I hear, you know uh, obviously you know AJ is, is is looking like AJ. You know Boyd is looking good. Uh, but I, I, I can tell you from what I hear, you know, talking with the coaches and and uh, and in all the OTAs and starting this camp, you know, John Ross, John Ross, uh, he looks. If you looked at seeing John Ross last year, he looked like a guy who was a, a high school player. He you looked know, he looked like a guy who headlights. Just, yeah, yeah, he looked like his helmet was too big, shoulder pads. You know, he just looked like a kid in a, in a grown man's game. And now if you look, you look at him. You know his stature. He looks stronger. He looks. He, he walks. He walks. He has. He has that swag back. Uh, he looks like he belongs. Uh, and uh, uh, his speed is, is second to none. You know, obviously. Uh, but he's he's running routes. Uh, he is uh, in in one on one coverages. You know, uh, they can't they can't uh, guard him. Uh, you know, he's in in the team of. Uh, 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 practices and team drills. You know he's uh, he's doing things right. Uh, so like you said, it's it's man with with our guys healthy. You look at 
Jill Ryan and Mixon. You look at uh, um, Tyler Boyd and, and, and uh, uh, obviously, you know, AJ, uh, and, and we get Eifert and Cross in there. And, 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 and Gordy plays and Price, you know, he, he, it, it might, it, there's, there's no way you, can, you can't tell me that we won't be a top five offense. Yeah, and so then the question comes defensively, and I think this is one of the best secondaries in football now. Um, last year, they were a middle-of-the-pack defense, mainly because the run defense was not very good. Defensive coordinator Paul Gunther is now gone to the Raiders. I don't think that hurts at all. I wasn't a big Gunther fan. I didn't like the way his defense played. Not aggressive enough for me. Um, yeah. and, and when you look at it up front, you've got Geno Adkins and Carlos Dunlap who, you know, Atkins is probably a top two or three tackle. As a pass rush yeah. specialist, Dunlop has to be in the top five. Um, the yeah. problem comes when you get the rest of the defensive line. There's not the depth that they mm-hmm. had three or four years ago. So I, I think a lot is going to be expected of Andrew Billings, who was inconsistent last year. He really needs mm-hmm. to step up his game this season. And then I think two big guys, what are huge question marks coming in, are fifth-round nose tackle, Andrew Brown, and, you know, normally a fifth round and a third round pick wouldn't be that big a deal. But Sam Hubbard was yeah, a third yeah. round pick from Ohio State. Yeah. And these guys yeah. need to find some consistency in their game. If they both perform at a mm. high level, I think this defense could be really good. Um, I think it's a yeah. lot to expect that. But these guys have got to come in and be able to contribute, I think, right away. Yeah. Hey, like you said, you look at our defensive line, uh, Dunlap and, and Gino, they're, they're the – you know some of the top tier guys in their at their position in the, in this league, and they're gonna we're gonna they're gonna give us what we expect. They've been consistent their entire career. Uh, we're 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 expecting you know a, a good year uh, from from both of those guys. Uh, they're physically uh, and mentally and spiritually they're they're at their peak. They're at their peak in their in their career. You know, so we still have them on that, that upward trajectory. So, you know, those guys are going to give what we need. And like you said, here, when we look at, I think, the guy, uh, uh, Sam Hubbard from, from Ohio State, uh, I think that they're really hoping that this guy can come in and he can uh, bring something special. You know, he has some good speed. Uh, you know, bring something special uh, uh, to, to help uh, Dunlap. Um, you know, Mike Johnson, I see that they're, they're having him play defensive end. They're putting him inside in, in, in different situations, you know, so they have some veteran guys that can help. But like you said, they're going to need Billy. They're going to need some of these, these uh, young guys. They're going to need, you know, hopefully, you know, at least two of them. But they're going to need at least one of those guys to uh, really step up and, and perform at a high level. And uh, that's going to be the difference from us being uh, defense uh, that that is right, you know, in that middle 14, 15, uh, 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 and uh, as as opposed to being right near, you know, four, five, six um, uh, in in as far as the defensive rankings. Yeah, and if you look at the linebacker position, it's kind of the same as usual. The question is, can the Bengals survive without Vontaze Perfect at the start of the season? Once again, faces a suspension. Oh, uh, uh, well, man. But but the one thing I do love is I absolutely love the Preston Brown signing. He's a hometown kid. He's a tackling machine. He'll man the middle. Um, Nick Mm -hmm. Vigil, who I thought was kind of inconsistent last year, but shows the ability to play at Sam linebacker. Mm -hmm. And then a guy who Mm -hmm. I think is a wild card, actually two wild cards, one would be Jordan Evans, who was a sixth-round pick last year. I think he had a really strong finish to his rookie season. And then – yeah. Malik Jefferson, who was a third-round pick, I think he was out of Texas, brings all sort of mm-hmm. athleticism to the Bengals linebacker core, yeah. and they've mm-hmm. been missing that. So if he can step yeah. up his game, Evans can continue to play well. I think this team can survive the first four weeks without Vontez. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, Preston, Preston Brown, he's a solid guy. You know, um, when we look at, you know, look at uh, linebacker play, Obviously, none of those guys, you know, are, are, are Vontaze. Uh, and it's fortunate we're going to have to do this again with Vontaze. Um, I, you know, I, I see uh, 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 Preston uh, really contributing, uh, uh, being a solid guy. Uh, but I, I don't – I still I don't see him as being a, a difference maker like, like Vontaze would be. Uh, uh, the, big, the bigger thing, we know he's going to be solid. He's going he's gonna to be, you know, I, from what I hear, he's picking up uh, Austin's defense – you know, he's going to be an integral part of, of the defensive scheme. Um, but it's going, it's going to be Nick Vigil. It's going to be uh, – my, my, my thing, 
to me, I, I, I see Evans. To me, when I see with Evans, I see a potential star. You know, yeah. I, I see a guy who has the potential. I see uh, where he was, you know, really passive and hesitant and, and apprehensive at the beginning of the year. And then I see some of the games at the, at the end of the season, I see him letting himself go uh, and uh, going after him and making plays. Uh, I, I think I think he's going to make a bigger impact, you know, than, than Nick Vincent. I think uh, Nick uh, did some things, some, some really good things throughout the year, you know, and hopefully if he can come and pick up this this offense, this defensive scheme, and still play solid, you know, he can he can uh, make a difference, uh, you know. And, and I like the other kid that I left third round of last year, uh, but my my wild my wild part is Jordan Evans. You know, yeah. I, I like uh, I like I like. You know things that he did. I, I, I like his his football IQ, and uh, I like like his uh, athletic ability. And I think he's going to be the one that's going to get a, an opportunity to shine uh, uh, as uh, once um, uh, Vontez Burfick is, is on uh, suspension. Uh, and I think one of those guys, and whoever whoever plays the best, I think there's going to be that that one guy that uh, uh, consistently plays alongside. Uh, Preston and Vontez once uh, Vontez gets gets back. Yeah, I, I think when you look at it, I think it's going to be Evans with those two by the time you get to the middle of the season. And the thing mm-hmm. about Brown is, the reason I like it is, he is a solid player. And at middle linebacker, mm-hmm. you've got a solid guy, and you're putting somebody like yeah. Vontez perfect on one side and maybe a Jordan Evans on the other side, that's good enough to yeah. have a really good linebacker core. Absolutely, absolutely. We we have the, have the potential to to be uh, uh, one of the top. You know, uh, uh, with with along with when Montez comes back, you know, we have some productive guys. We have some some run stompers. Uh, you know, we have some guys that can get back in coverage. You know, so we have. You know, a lot of times you have you know uh, guys linebackers who are really good against the run, but so and so against the, the pass. I think I, I think our starting three. These guys can play the run, uh, and they can play and get back in pass coverage as, as well. All right, that brings us to the secondary, which I think is the strength of the defense, and it should be because it seems like every first-round pick for the last decade has been a cornerback. (laughs) Uh, You've got Drake Kirkpatrick, William Jackson, Dark West Denard, and, of course, George Iloka, Sean Williams at the safeties. I really like the Mm -hmm. selection of Jesse Bates in the draft. I think he's going to be a good player. But the guy that stands Mm -hmm. out to me here is William Jackson. I think William Jackson has has a chance to be – one of the top two or three cornerbacks in the NFL by the time he's done. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You look at, like I said, we we have we have a core of veteran guys. We have we have guys, a uh, bunch of first round guys. So uh, you know that they have talent. We know they have the, the ability. Um, but like I, I, like you said, I think twenty two. Uh, I think he's going to be special. He he, he did some things uh, last year uh, to show that he has the potential to be one of the best cornerbacks in his league. So if he can come back and he's healthy and he stays on his game, you know, I can really see him uh, uh, legitimately uh, being a Pro Bowl cornerback this year. Uh, hopefully, Dre, Dre uh, uh, um, I, don't, I don't see Dre's coverage ability as, as good as uh, uh, William, um, but he's, he's a veteran guy. He's, he's there. He's, he's going to be the elder statesman on, as far as the cornerbacks are, are concerned. Uh, so I, I hopefully he can uh, provide the leadership there. Um, but I think our defense is going to, and our, our, our secondary is going to be stronger if Bates can unseat one of those guys. That's yeah, as I, yeah, I would think I, Sean I, I, Williams yeah. here because George I. Loke was yeah. a Pro Bowl player until Reggie Nelson left town, which tells yeah, Reg, me Reg, that Reg, Reggie Nelson yeah. basically patrolled everything yeah. back there. And absolutely, absolutely. The only problem with this year, though, is can a rookie like Jesse Bates come in and do that? And the other question is, with Marvin, will even get the chance to do that? Because we saw how, I mean, John Ross was kind of a deer law caught in the headlights last year, but I think that's just mm-hmm. because, you know, you could sense if your coach doesn't really believe in you yet. And I think Marvin yeah. is a guy yeah. that has a tendency to go with the veterans over the younger guys. And I think a yeah. lot of times to the detriment of the team. And I just hope Bates yeah. gets a chance to play. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's like I said, it's going to depend on, you know, I, I hear that you're looking good. But it's going to depend on, you know, once we get in the, in, in, in the games and you start playing and, you know, he's making some plays. Uh, 
Uh, like you said, when, once uh, Reggie Nelson uh, left our secondary, I, I think it exposed our safeties, and our safeties weren't as, as strong as we, we thought they were. Uh, so and that that was in, in uh, ILO could show that he had a lot of work to do. So, you know, but both of those guys, both these guys are seasoned guys, you know, veteran guys, uh, but, you know, it's a new defense, Mike. Right? It's a new defense. So uh, even though you're a veteran guy, uh, it's a new defense, and, and uh, they're, they're picking it up, and they're learning this new defense along with Bates at the same time. Uh, so they, they don't have a head start on, on, on this guy as far as uh, learning the defensive scheme from, from Austin. So uh, I'm, I'm actually hoping that, that it'll be Bates and, and Aloka. Uh, but you never know, you know, veteran guys and uh, you come out and you see what kind of season you have and you, you come back as a, as a veteran and, uh, you, 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 you want your job, you want to keep your job. So, uh, if, if Bates starts or Bates pushes, uh, uh, pushes him, you know, that means he's, he's going to be really, you know, playing really good in order to keep that starting role. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited because I, either way, if Bates doesn't start, that means, you know, Sean Woods is playing well enough to keep that job. Uh, but if they does start, Mike, that means uh, we potentially have something special, you know, at, at, at that strong safety spot. Yeah, and I think so far from what I've read, the surprise at camp has been Cincinnati Bengals' seventh-round pick, Auden Tate, who is already making a strong case for the Bengals roster. I mean, the kid has great feet. He's six foot five, And, I mean, I was just sitting here while you were talking there. Not that I wasn't paying attention to you, Joe. But I am, <laughs> I, I watched some of his film, and this kid has great feet. He's a huge yeah. target, and this is a guy that can make this team right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's what I was saying. That big, big guy, you know, the athletic guy, talented guy. So we we have we have, you know, my group. I've always said we had we had plenty of pieces of the of the puzzle to be able to be a top tier team, um, but it always goes back to the trenches. Even, you know, our guys, the secondary guys are good. You know, if our defensive line sucks, if our offensive line sucks, then that's going to that's gonna kill everything. It, it was, it was a horrible line. You, you, your center is collapsing. You know, the pocket, uh, you, can't, you can't pass. You know, you can't run. You know, and, and if your defensive line is, 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 is sucking, you know, you, you can't stop the run. You know, and, and if this guy, you know, you're giving quarterbacks, you know, four or five seconds, you know, to throw the ball, you know, nobody's going to be able to cover. So, you know, still this game is, even though it's changed, it's, it's evolved. Mike, this thing, this game is still, uh, it's still one in the trenches, man. Yeah. Every level of football, if your offensive line and defensive yeah. line are good, your team's going to be good. Um, yeah. And if you look at it, I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles won last year because their defensive line made a play on Tom Brady on that final drive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and yeah, they said it's, it's a, a play here, play there, but it, it's solid. You know, they're making plays throughout the game. You know, um, uh, you, these guys. Uh, you, you look at those guys, and you know, they didn't have any. Those guys weren't any more dominant to me than what we had as in the Bengals. But you know, those guys made plays. You know, offensively, they were they were you know blocking for their quarterback to you know be able to move the ball and they were able to run the ball consistently. Um, and, you know, when you have that, when you have that consistent uh, balance, you see what we did the last three games. You yeah. know, we had that consistent running game. And, you know, it made a difference. You know, it makes a difference, you know, offensively and, and defensively if, if your big guys are, are, uh, are playing some good ball. All right. Um, Saturday, the Bengals will have a scrimmage, which will give us a little bit of something to look at at Paul Brown Stadium. <laughs> it's family day. So make sure yeah. you're in the Cincinnati area. You get down to check it out. I think Joe and I will be there and check it out. And we'll yeah. report back if you can mm-hmm. go see it. So, Joe, any final yeah. words? Well, Mike, it's new season, man. And, you know, we're, you and I, we're, 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 uh, we're drinking the bingo juice, man. And, you know, we, we see some good things. And uh, uh, we're, we're hoping that these things can pan out. And, uh, you know, maybe, Mike, this, this can be the year, man, where uh, – you know, we finally get back to the big dance. Uh, and, and we have the players. Our core guys are at their peak. Uh, so, you know, it's it's you know, our, our time. Our time with this core of guys that we have, our time is, gonna, is running out. Uh, so we, it's not like you know, with our core guys, we have, you know, four or five more years. We don't. You know, these guys are all going to be peaking, you know, this year, next year, you know, in three, in three years at the most. 
uh, and then and it's going to be a change. You're going to see a changeover. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, this this 2018 bunch uh, can take advantage of you know the the really stars that we have, and you know everybody else can elevate their game. And uh, you know we are uh, hopefully uh, rooting uh, in January. All right, um, and All right. I, would, I would like to say, in my defense, that the last two years I didn't drink the Kool Aid, Joe. That was just you. But I am drinking the Kool Aid with you this year. <laughs> but I mean, the AFC's weaker. I, I look at it in Pittsburgh. You look at them. You don't know what's going to happen with Le'Veon Bell. He's obviously not happy. Um, him, yeah. Antonio Brown, Big Ben. That whole thing could implode at any time. The Cleveland Browns. Mm. Yeah, talent wise, they're as good as anybody in the AFC, maybe now. Yeah, except yeah, they've got, absolutely. except they've got Hugh Jackson, Ken Zampezi, and what was the moron Todd Haley from Pittsburgh, who are coaching the team. And when you look at Baltimore, yeah. I mean, can Joe Flacco even do it anymore? I mean, mm-hmm. obviously they think that Joe Flacco's almost done. Or why else would you draft Lamar Jackson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you know, you look at it. There's there's question marks. Uh, I think the other teams in the league have as, as many question marks, or even more question marks than we do. Uh, and our thing is staying healthy. If Gordy can stay healthy, if, if Eifert can stay healthy, and Ross can stay healthy, uh, I, I, I think uh, I think we can be looking at something special. All right, Joe. Um, make sure you Good get deal. the grueling truth. And follow us on Twitter, at Grilling Truth. Go follow us on Facebook. Join our group page. Um, We will have a set schedule during the week, doing a show every Wednesday night. Um, We will probably do something next week also, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I want to remind everybody that now you can hear all the Grilling Truth shows on Spotify, plus iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher. Wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the Grilling Truth. So for Joe Kelly... I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.